welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm John and this is Matt and we're back to reviewing X-Men this week. But before we dive into our latest X-Men video, if you are a fan of 4K video reviews, movie reviews, television reviews, game reviews, we do them all here on this channel. So please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to like the video. So guys, we're talking about the second X-Men trilogy. This is, you know, starting with First Class, Days of Future Past, Apocalypse, and then we're also going to be talking about The Wolverine. And Matt hadn't really seen these before, if ever, I think. I seen First Class, and I think I seen Days of Future Past. I, the only one I didn't see was Apocalypse, I think. But this is probably with ten years ago was the last time I seen them when I first got the Blu-rays, and we just upgraded to the 4Ks, so we watched them again for the review. I remember enjoying First Class, and and then I got a little confused once Days of Future Past came around, and. I think maybe Apocalypse might have even been in theaters at the time, I guess, and I just, I didn't run out to see it. Uh, I like the X-Men movies, I do, but I'm not going to try to sit here and explain the timeline because I don't even understand it. I, they're just, you think one thing and then the, another movie tells you something different and then the next movie erases everything, it's, <laughs> who knows. So I, oh, that's the biggest problem with X-Men overall. It's like, they'll build something up, and then the next movie undoes it, and they don't even address it in the next movie, and then you move on to a different movie that's like a spin-off, and then they're talking about something in one of the movies. And right, like, yeah. Okay, where are we now? And it's great, because even in Deadpool, I just watched this last night, he makes a joke like, which which timeline are we talking about? The Stuart or the McAvoy timeline? Right. <laughs> but uh, I, I didn't realize that there's technically... Like, it was a soft reboot, I guess, uh, First Class was. But I just thought that he was just playing a young, a young Xavier. I didn't realize it was two different timelines. I, I, I'm just confused as hell. I mean, I love X-Men. I, I was a big fan of the, the X-Men animated series. I played the, the hell out of the arcade game at uh, Sports Plus. The only, I think, I don't know. That might have just been a New York thing. I, again, I just so confused. I have no idea what's going on at this point. I just kind of gave up on trying to understand. <laughs> yeah, so basically what happened was we had the original trilogy and then they made Wolverine Origins and the idea was that they were going to make these origin stories. So, But mm -hmm. Wolverine Origins failed so bad and they had a Gambit Origins plan, they had a Scott Summers Origins plan. This was all like kind of like what Star Wars did when they were going to do these spin would have been great. I remember Storm was the next one up. Was it Storm? I knew Storm Gambit. There was a bunch that they had and they kind of released like all these ideas with all these directors kind of like you know right. the, the monster universe that we were supposed to get and i wish we would have gotten an origin series because i mean i didn't think wolverine was that bad you know i i know you liked it but i i thought it was atrocious but it did lead us to kind of an origin series in first class because mm -hmm. that's pretty much the origins of professor x and magneto and uh mystique and and um a lot of other x-men i really actually really did enjoy first class I did too. I, I really did. I, I thought that they had perfect casting for Magneto and uh, Xavier. They nailed it. And even in the original ones, like with Patrick Stewart and I, Ian McKellen. Yeah, as Magneto. They're definitely the, the most per perfect casted in this entire franchise, in my opinion. Oh, I love Michael Fassbender as Magneto. He's yeah. perfectly he, cast. Great, yep. He's such an underrated actor. I mean, I've said it on this channel before, but him as Steve Jobs in the movie Jobs is amazing. And I think Michael Fassbender is a race car driver now. I don't even think he acts anymore. And it's a shame because he's a great actor and he's mm. incredible as Magneto. But another thing about First Class that I really loved is Kevin Bacon as the villain. Kevin Bacon. Yeah, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Fun <laughs> fact about Kevin Bacon, I always confuse him and Ethan Hawke. I don't know why. I, I can see like, that in the face. You know, I I know the names, but for some reason, Ethan Hawke, Kevin Bacon, same same guy. For me, Kevin Bacon, <laughs> the first Kevin Bacon movie I ever saw is Sleepers, and I'm sure you never saw this movie, but he plays a child rapist in that movie, and so every time I see Kevin Bacon, I think of him in Sleepers, Okay. and that's nothing like the person Kevin Bacon, it's just that's where my mind goes. So it always screws with me right. seeing him. I can't imagine, the, I would assume my first Kevin Bacon movie I saw was probably Friday the 13th, but... That makes sense. I don't know. No, I don't know why it was Sleepers for me. That or like, you know, I mean, Tremors. He's also the beginning of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Hey, yeah, Kevin Bacon's great. And he but, was great in, here, in this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was. He was great villain. So then speaking of villains, one villain I did not like was in The Wolverine. 
Uh, the Viper? Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, once they moved off first class, that's why I believe he wasn't in first class, Hugh Jackman, is because he was making the Wolverine, I guess. Okay. Because, like, he's only in the one scene when he tells them to go fuck themselves. Right. Yes. Which, I think you were saying, you were kind of getting a little annoyed with, like, they, over, they, they overdid Wolverine in these series? I think this, the X-Men should have just been called Wolverine plus Magneto and Xavier, because... And, and Mystique, because they are just beating a dead horse in all of these movies. It just keeps going back to Magneto, Mystique, Xavier, Wolverine, in, in a circle. We don't, they don't care about any of the other characters. So, I mean, how many times are we going to tell the same story? But yeah, yeah. overall, they're enjoyable movies. Yeah, The Wolverine, like, is a well-made movie. Like, it's directed by James Mangold, just like Logan, but... It's just so freaking boring. That's what really killed me for it. Like, yeah, It's yeah. well made, but it, it's paced so slow. I really hope they give the X-Men to Kevin Feige and he gets to play with those toys because he will make a good X-Men movie. I think he'll flesh out all the side characters that got buried in this trilogy. Like in Apocalypse, for example, Jubilee, I believe, is in one scene. Like, in the background, if mm -hmm. anything, and Jubilee is, like, one of the best characters in the animated series. I believe that was, she was, she's the Asian girl that was wearing the, the yellow raincoat. Yes, right? yeah. yeah, and they don't, that's Jubilee, like, that's yeah, one yeah, of the yeah. most popular X-Men. I think she was in, like, one of the first episodes of the animated series. The right? first episodes, yeah. uh, the, with the Sentinels, which actually yeah. look, the Sentinels from Sentinels, or whatever. Sentinels. I, Sentinels, who actually, the ones that they show in the 60s, look just like the ones from the animated series, so that's a pretty cool callback. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, but, they were like dark blue and purple. Right? Yeah, or something like and, that. and that was the futuristic ones that when we opened in Days of Future Past, which are just taking all their powers, which is... I was an awesome opening. Yeah. You know, I, I love the open. I, I think Days of Future Past out of that second trilogy is the best of them. What is is it Days of Future Past or Apocalypse with that, that Sweet Dreams sequence? With, that's that's Quicksilver, right? Yeah, but he when does he's one. running around saving everybody? That's in Apocalypse. But he does that similar thing in Days of Future Past in the White House. Yeah. In the Pentagon, rather. Yes, when yes, he goes yes. to save Magneto. Yeah, those are probably the coolest scenes in the entire Oh, franchise. yeah. <laughs> yeah, Evan Peters is great as Quicksilver. We don't get much of him. Which mm. is a shame because he's a great character and he's Magneto's son, which is only hinted at in Days of Future Past, and then they blow it up in Apocalypse. And we neither of us have seen Dark Phoenix yet. Nope. So, so we're getting to that, and obviously because of how the reviews were a few years ago, and we didn't have a YouTube channel, so we weren't forced to see it. So we right. just wiped it off. You know, it was one of those things in the you Fox. You know what happened with me? Because I really enjoyed the X Men movies, but I after First Class and I guess Days of Future Past, I just kind of lost interest. I'm not sure why, I mean, at points during these movies I was getting a little bored, but, you know, I think overall they're okay movies. Uh, again, Wolverine was one of my favorite superheroes next to Batman and Spider-Man, so. Yeah, for me, my favorite superheroes, and my wife pointed out this out, like, I must just like anti-heroes, because my top three, two of them are X-Men. So it goes Batman, Wolverine, and then Deadpool. So I just Deadpool's those, cool, yeah. Those are my three favorite, and we'll get to Deadpool from another video. But like, yeah, like Matt said, Wolverine. Even in Apocalypse, they shoehorned in a Weapon X scene. So, and because we're watching them in order, I think we've seen three different types of Weapon X scenes now because we saw the oh, yeah. with Brian Cox. So we've seen three different. Uh, what's his name? Strikers. Strikers. We've seen three different strikers, and they all just keep getting younger. Mm -hmm. and it's, but it's all the same time. Yeah, I'm confused as hell. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is just. That is the poorest part to these films, is just that if you try and just watch them thinking that they're connected... There's no consistency. It's not like the MCU. These are like, if you can watch Apocalypse in a bubble, Apocalypse isn't that bad. But if you try and start thinking about where it takes place in the timeline, you're going to get upset. Mm -hmm. Because it makes no sense at all, really. I mean, it's a pretty well-made movie. Yeah, it's, again, I, I actually enjoyed it because I remember you saying you've seen Apocalypse, right? Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen it before. This is my first time seeing it. And I was going into it with low expectations, and I ended up enjoying it. I think it was that Quicksilver scene that, that really put it over the top for me. But overall, it wasn't a bad movie. Very confusing, again. Um, still have no idea what's going on. The but. best part of Apocalypse is Magneto's storyline that him having a family right, and, and yeah. then, you know, unfortunately that getting taken away from him because he saves a guy's life mm -hmm. and then just, you know, he stops. Like, unfortunately, his, they, they rat him out. They kill his family. Well, yeah, he's not wrong for, like, he's not wrong for not trusting humans. I get it. Yeah. You know, it's... He's 100% justifiable, you know? Yeah, if that happened to you, like, how would you feel? You wouldn't trust anyone. If they just killed your family, 
yeah. in front of you. Like, yeah, I would do what he did, which was take the necklace and jam it through every single one of their heads. Mm -hmm. So it makes perfect sense, and that's why you get the push and pull between Eric. Charles and Eric. You know, and then yeah. unfortunately Jennifer Lawrence's performances as the series goes on for Mystique starts to fall off. I think film to film, you can tell by the third film she just doesn't want to put the makeup on anymore. So a lot of the time she's in her regular skin, and they try and twist it a certain way. But from what I understand, Jennifer Lawrence was just I don't want to do the movies anymore. <laughs> so you know, and you can clearly just see it on screen. She's kind of like phoning it in. Whereas James McAvoy and um, Michael Fassbender are all still all, all in on it. And anytime Hugh Jackman's on screen, he's never holding back. Oh my God! And in the Wolverine, do you see what this man's body looks like? It's disgusting that a man can actually look that veiny and that amazing. Um, <laughs> I, I work out every day, and I'm going to be completely honest. I haven't hit that yet, but I'm getting close. Yeah, you're close. I'm getting close. Ugh, that's real. Yep, there you go. Very close to Hugh Jackman. Mm -hmm. the they have called me the albino Hugh Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, let's move on to some physical media, because that, that is what I, really what we wanted to talk about, because we did upgrade for this video. So we'll start with the Wolverine on Blu-ray. So this is my original Blu-ray from back in the day. I don't believe this is on 4K. No, that's the only one. That's actually the only edition, I believe. I looked it up because I have the same one as you. Okay. So it's a pretty old Blu-ray. So but out of all the X-Men movies, I think only the two Wolverine movies are the only ones not available on 4K. Yeah, Logan was one of my early 4K purchases. Really? Yes. Yeah, so this is actually very old because this is the ones where it came with the DVD and digital copy. So you actually had to put a physical disc into your computer and then redeem a code and then it would rip it off the disc. So <laughs> remember those days? How much how difficult they they actually printed a digital code onto a disc. It's yeah. insane. They wasted a whole disc for that. <laughs> they used to do remember getting the AOL online discs in the mail and all that stuff? Yeah, you'd pay we had to pay for internet like that back in the day, even though no one ever had to because they just kept sending those AOL discs with everything. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh I thought this was actually a very good looking Blu ray. You know, it is a I, very good looking Blu ray. We good talk sound. about we talk about four Ks a lot, but we we also can't take anything away from a Blu-ray because Blu-ray still is very high quality, amazing picture quality, and depending on your player and your TV, it's going to upscale it. it it's still a, a very good way and one of the most popular ways to consume your movies. Yeah, uh, for example, I have Independence Day on Blu-ray, and it's such a beautiful Blu-ray. Blu I see no reason to upgrade to the 4K. It, I can't imagine it looking better. Now, it, they're going to probably throw some HDR on it, but I don't imagine to the naked eye it could look any better. Now, given there's some bad Blu-rays, but that is not one of them. The Wolverine is a great-looking Blu-ray. Yes. And, I mean, there's sometimes with older... I mean, this is not the type of movie that I would be looking for this in, but put some older movies from the 80s. Some, like, we, we popped in a DVD on my CRT TV the other day. We watched The Terminator. We're like, this actually looks really good. Like, yeah. I kind of want to sit Indian style in front of the TV and watch this. But that's what it was designed for, that <laughs> On the DVD. Floor, yeah. It was for that TV. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. so, but let's talk about the 4K. So, Matt, you have the three set with all three of them in it. Yep. I actually don't have that set. What I have is a Blu-ray for first class, a 4K, which I have the Blu-ray for. I upgraded it for Days of Future Past, and then I have Apocalypse in a Steelbook, also a Blu-ray. I had the same Steelbook, still sealed, never seen it, and then I had those other two Blu-rays. I had, well, Days of Future Past I had on Blu-ray, so I upgraded the entire trilogy because I didn't even know they were on 4K. These slipped by us, and we just picked them up recently, and that's why we're doing this review now. Yeah. But this is uh, this is like the other set we showed off um, of the original three, and now we have First Class, Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse. So you have your basic 4K case, then you have the 4K movie, the Blu-ray movie, of each one, of all three of them. So this is a six disc collection. You got the 4K and Blu-ray versions. Mm -hmm. And the 4Ks, I think, look very good. You know, I mean, I haven't watched the Blu-rays in years, but I think these 4Ks might be worth the upgrade if you're a big fan of the movies. The, the final movie, Apocalypse, actually did have Atmos. So all the other ones have been DTS, but Apocalypse did have an Atmos track. Yeah, Apocalypse has an Atmos track. I do believe that Deadpool 2 has an Atmos track, and so mm -hmm. does Logan. Not the first Deadpool. The first Deadpool, I believe, does have Atmos. Are you sure? Yeah, I read it on the back of the box. Okay. then I that... could be wrong, but I'm 90% sure I read that. That would make sense. That was one, well, we'll get to Deadpool movie next week, but... 
As far as, like, I did a comparison because I do a first class on Blu-ray, and then I watched the Disney Plus stream, and I did see an upgrade for the Disney Plus stream for first class to 4K. And um, I really do think that was impressive. So the Blu-ray, it is actually worth upgrading to the 4K, because I don't know about Disney Plus compared to the 4K, though. Right. I would say 95% of the time, a Blu-ray disc is going to look better than a stream. Yeah. But Disney Plus has one of the stronger streams. Though. They do. They do. Yeah. But this is a nice set. I, I like the sleeve that they have it in and the, the nice metallic colors. And I could recommend this. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. I can definitely say if you have the Blu-rays. For Days of Future Past, which is the only one I did an upgrade for, and I watch Days of Future Past all the time, so it's not that much of an upgrade, I'm not going to lie to you, for this. It, 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 for, it was actually more noticeable with First Class than it was for Days of Future Past. So, if you have the Blu-ray, I don't think you need to upgrade. It's a pretty old 4K, and the Blu-ray itself is actually very, very good. Now, as far as Apocalypse goes, I have the Blu-ray, and I actually watched all... Th I did the this and the stream, too, and very similar stream to the Blu-ray and the 4K. So, the only one I really can recommend definitely upgrading, and I didn't do it myself, is First Class. And that's just my opinion. That's probably because that's the oldest film out mm. of all these. And like we said, the Wolverine doesn't have a 4K, so you have no choice but to watch that Blu-ray or, you know, stream it. Yeah, I dove deep. I bought the whole set, and it, I think it was maybe $42, so not terrible for three. Marvel put out by Fox at the time, yeah. at least. So, yeah, no, they're definitely good. You know, the early 4Ks, I looked up the data release, they're pretty much right in the first two years, I believe, 4K existence. So maybe one day we'll get a newer version of these. But for now, this is what we got, and they're pretty good. Definitely can recommend you grab them. And next week, we're going to talk about the first two Deadpool movies, the sequels to these, Dark Phoenix and New Mutants. And we're also going to talk about Logan, which is one of the best movies probably ever. So we'll dive into that next week. So as always, guys, thanks for joining us on another edition of Let's Talk. Hey, everyone. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I hope you're enjoying our review of the X-Men franchise. Sorry there was such a big gap between part one and part two. There won't be as big of a gap between part two and part three. Part three will be out next week sometime. But it's Friday. That means it's time to do our digital code giveaway. So if you're new to the channel, this is how it works. In Friday's video, we are going to post the digital code giveaway questions. So me or Matt will ask two questions. All you have to do is answer one of those questions in the comment section below and you're automatically entered into our digital code giveaway. This week we're going to have two winners like we've had for the last couple of weeks and you'll have your choice of any of the digital codes that you have seen on your screen or you could ask to see if we have any other ones because we do have a backlog of digital codes that we add after the winners pick the codes that they want. But you don't have to answer both questions. You only have to answer one and you're entered into it. And then if you are entered into our digital code giveaway, you come back to Monday's video and at the end of that video, we are going to be spinning our magic wheel and whoever the two lucky names that the wheel picks, those are the two winners of the digital code giveaway. So it's pretty simple. You don't got to do much to enter. This is really just a chance for all of us to talk movies in the comments section below. So without further ado, this week's question, I figured we'd keep it a little bit broad and just find out what everyone's favorite superheroes are. So question number one is, who is your favorite Marvel superhero? And question two is, who is your favorite DC superhero? Now you don't have to answer both, you only got to answer one. So just let us know who your favorite Marvel and DC character is is and that's really it guys and if you do enter we'll be seeing you on monday and as always guys thank you so much for supporting the channel nothing helps us out more than by liking this video and subscribing to the channel